Hello, hello. So it says I am live streaming. Good evening, everybody. So whether you're watching this live, whether you're watching this later, this or whether you're listening on the podcast, um, welcome. My name is Charlie Wall. And this is uh, a little series that I'm doing, I'm trying to do every day in my free group, in the Freedom Group, um, which is a free group on Facebook, in preparation for my Freedom Program, my She Finds Freedom Program, which starts on Monday. And I did a poll in my group, just asking people what they'd love to hear me talk about and one of the topics or the I think it was the second or the third highest topic was holding myself back and I think this is another really interesting one so um what was the one I did feeling stuck was the last one that I did and before that I think it was identifying with physical attractiveness um, I think there's probably one more, but I can't remember off the top of my head just now, but holding yourself back. Now, if you are listening to this in the group and you're listening to this and it's not live, I'd love to hear from you. It, don't worry about, you know, it doesn't matter if no one else has left a comment. If you want to leave a comment and let me know what holding yourself back means for you um because I'd love to know what form it takes for you I know that and I haven't asked people to be specific they just ticked a poll and uh, actually one of the ladies in the group added this it wasn't one that I personally added and it got quite a few women who ticked it as well and so for me I can only really speak to how that's shown up for me in my own life and how I hear that show up for others in their lives, in the women's lives that I coach. And um, of course, I'm doing this to, I love doing this, it's one of my favourite things to do, but also I'm doing this particularly, and this many in in this short space of time, to promote my She Finds Freedom programme, which is an eight-week programme and we delve into how you find freedom from holding yourself back would be one of the way you know like one of the things you could find freedom from or feed finding freedom from a diet mindset or a self-loathing mindset or um, misidentifying with what you think you look like or who you think you are or self-doubt or anxiety um, any number of habits so I think holding yourself back is probably uh, a way in uh, uh, maybe a description that you would describe yourself as doing and my guess is if you are identifying with that and have ticked that I would guess again and, and of course I can only guess because I haven't got any comments so so far on the live um that it's a way that you're beating yourself up it's a, another form in in you beating yourself up and how that looks because there's an expectation of how you think your life should look and you're not doing whatever it is that you think you should be doing. So it sort of falls into the shoulda, woulda, coulda committee, the shitty committee, and you are using it as a baton to beat yourself with. Now, if you are holding yourself back and you're literally holding yourself back from taking a risk, getting a different job, getting a different relationship, um, working with me, 
um, whatever form that looks like for you, my guess is that it's usually based around insecurity and fear of some description. And fear just stands for false evidence appearing real. Because if I have an idea of something in the future that I want to be doing, and I have this idea of what that looks like, and it excites me, and I get like, you know, goosebumps thinking about this thing that I want to do, I'm imagining it. What can often happen when that sort of comes from an intuitive nudge or a gentle nudge or a kind of knowing that this is what I want to do, what very often happens is that your shitty committee will come in, that voice of self-doubt will come in and tell you all the reasons why you shouldn't be doing the thing, right? I was talking to someone, I have one client for whom this is a dream and I was talking to someone recently who also said this same thing that they've had they've got this dream where they want to write a children's book what's holding them back from that is I'm not good enough I don't have the time what if no one likes it what if no one buys my book what if it's rubbish what if what if what if and we go into this future that's all we can ever do, right? If we've only got this moment right now, we can ever, only ever go into the future with our thinking or the past with our thinking. And our past is created from what's known and the future is what's made up. The future is made up by us and our brain can only do that with what's known to us. And it can only do that from our past experiences. So if you have an experience of thinking that you get life wrong, that you're not good enough, that you're not bright enough, that you're not clever enough, that you're getting life wrong, essentially, you, you as I've said before during these this series, you will find evidence that your theory is true. You will find evidence that your theory is true. And thus, you will probably create the belief that you can't get what you want, whatever the thing is, and thus you don't do it. So this kind of hooks quite nicely into the other video where I was talking about how your brain wants things to stay the same, wants things to stay in the known, so that it will keep doing the things and it will get you to do the things every single day that kind of you know and that keep you safe because it's in the world of the known so it becomes like a habit and that includes your thinking that includes dread that includes all of the things that you think about on a daily basis it's why people feel tired or they feel um upset or sad or pissed off or frustrated with themselves which adds another layer of judgment on because they're not realizing that their thinking is what's creating their experience and their thinking is often habitual, i.e. we like replay a stuck record over and over and over again. Once you realize that that's what's happening, this is why I, I like the Justin Bieber metaphor, because I heard this in a book uh, by a guy called Amir Kakuti, who's absolutely wonderful. He's actually one of the guest coaches that I've got in the Freedom Programme. He wrote a book called, I think it's called What the Fuck Are the Principles or something like that. But he talks about the metaphor of like, if you don't know how thought works, you think that thought is our thoughts are meaningful and they mean something about us and they're telling us something about ourselves versus the actual truth, which is they're just in and out of our head and they're narrating our life but they usually do it from a negative perspective, right? He says, you know, if I'm, I think he uses the metaphor, like, you know, I'm driving along in the car. I don't know how a radio works, right? So I've got this radio. I don't understand it, how it works. And um, 
Justin Bieber comes on. And if I don't know that I can change the station on a radio, I'm stuck with Justin Bieber. <laughs> and that would be pure hell. <laughs> Hi, Sandra. I'll, I'll speak, let me speak to that in a second. I'll, I'll come back to that question. Thank you for asking it. Um, so because we know how radios work, we know we don't have to be stuck in a Justin Bieber marathon. We can switch the radio station. Once you know how your brain works, how your mind works, how thought works, you know that it's just going to pass on through. So if I'm holding myself back, it's because I'm believing a thought that's telling me I can't do or I'm not good enough to be whatever it is that we're holding ourselves back from. And that just comes from insecurity and not trusting your own innate knowing and staying in the world of what's known, which is usually again and always comes back to a form of I'm not good enough. So Sandra's asked a question um, on the live and it says, how do you how do you come over as confident in an interview if you don't really feel it? I don't think you do. <laughs> do you? <laughs> if my understanding of thought is correct, which I think it is, because I've um, been in this and seen something around this uh, for a few years now, if I don't feel confident, Sandra, I can probably guess that I will look unconfident, I will sound unconfident, and I will muddle up my words. So it will be very obvious to lots of people that I feel unconfident. That's one theory. Um... Another theory is, you know, in the world of like feel the fear and do it anyway, is that you pretend you're confident. So you act as if you are confident. And so that's one way of doing it. But um, and I'm sure, you know, lots of people and I know that you've heard this, Sandra, about yourself and we've had this discussion is that some people have said to you, Sandra, you you know you seem confident and you've said to me you don't feel it sometimes so whilst I can't answer that question for you directly like how do you come over as confident in an interview if you don't really feel it are you saying that you're holding yourself back from doing interviews because you don't feel confident because ultimately there is no one right answer to that question what I think would be more helpful for you to see is that confidence is within you at all times. It doesn't go anywhere. It's not something you get. It's something you were born with. The only thing that covers over confidence, innate confidence, innate well-being is your thinking. If you go into an interview with the belief that you've already created, that you're not going to get the job, that you're not good enough, that these people are better than you, that's what you'll be feeling. And so that can lead to anxiety, which can lead to a whole range of symptoms. For me, it would be um, you know, when I used to have to teach the doctors and nurses in Edinburgh, I would be... Uh, you know, sounding ridiculously shaky. I'd be getting my words out backwards because I absolutely hated teaching and had loads of thinking about it and would have done anything to get out of it. So if interviews is a way that you're holding yourself back, for example, then I would urge you to see where have you been confident in other areas 
is your theory true that you're unconfident or is your theory only true in certain situations where you feel unconfident? Because if it's universally true that you're unconfident, then you can probably prove to me that you are. If your confidence shows up in one area but not another, it's not universally true for you that you're unconfident. It just looks like you are unconfident in interviews. And any of the rest of you who are like feeling like you're holding yourself back, you can ask yourself the question, you know, whatever it is that you're holding yourself back from, moving forwards in life, you know, we looked at that at the beginning, you can really start to see or have a think about or reflect on like, is my theory 100% true? Is it true that I am holding myself back in this area? Or do I just feel scared about something? Am I anxious about something? Do I not feel good enough? Is that what's showing up for me? What is on the other side of the thing? Right? What is on the other side of whatever you're holding yourself back from. How does it keep you safe staying where you are? That's another good question. Like what would be, if I had a protector part, what would it be doing? How would it be keeping me safe by keeping me uh, in the same place? And just challenge yourself. Because, you know, something that I've said before, and I think this is really important to say is if you are holding yourself back from something and you don't want to be and you'd rather be doing something else or having some some other experience and you don't do the thing it's usually again because your brain gets to be right so your theory gets to be proven right i.e i'm not good enough i can't do it blah 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 whatever it is that your theory is now, as I've said before, I go into this much more and in more depth in my freedom program. I would love to take you on that journey for eight weeks. You will get access to my circle community. You have seen or may have seen a number of testimonials from women who have done the program who have gained freedom for themselves from whatever it was they felt was holding them back and it can be life-changing it is the last time that I'm going to do this as a live program which means you will get group coaching with me um, moving forwards you'll be able to buy it anytime so if you're listening to this and it's not um October you know it's not October 2022 you can still buy the program it would just be as a self-study program. You'll still get access to the circle group. Um, you just won't have the um, more intense group calls with me. So I hope that helps for those of you that ticked holding myself back. And I'd love to hear from you if you had anything in this. Um, and hopefully I'll talk to you very soon. I'm going to try and do another one tomorrow. It's Friday tomorrow. and. Um, yeah, take care of yourselves. Mm.